guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and coming back. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well wherever you may be. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the two tools that I, for some reason, <laughs> haven't talked about really uh, much at all, and that is the eraser tool and the clone and stamp tool. Somebody asked me about that recently, and I thought, you know, God, I don't think I ever talked about those, and I don't know why. So let's correct that. Um, the first thing to know is that uh, I think people confuse them a little bit, especially clone and stamp, I think, gets a little confusing to people. But... Um, they actually do very similar. Actually, the, the intent of both of them is really the same thing, which is to get rid of something you don't want in the photo. However, they go about it a little bit differently. With the eraser tool, you actually just paint over the object you want erased, and Luminar will figure out uh, what pixels to put in the place of the pixels you're erasing. So it'll sort of do the math, for lack of a better word, for you, and say, okay, you're getting rid of that. It probably needs to look like this. And there's intelligence in that. I'm not trying to oversimplify. Uh, actually, I am trying to oversimplify, um, but there's a lot of intelligence that goes into it. It looks at, I'm sure, light and shadow and tone and that sort of thing, color probably as well, and uh, tries to figure out how to do it. And actually, I think it does a pretty good job. Um, the first version of Luminar that came out a couple of years ago, I didn't really think it was as good as Snapheel, for example, which is a uh, you know older product from Skyloom. But um, with the current version of Luminar, I think it's good. I use it a lot and I like it. Um, so that's what happens with the eraser tool. It kind of figures out for you and, and replaces it. Um, clone and stamp is different. Clone and stamp is where you're saying, take a copy of this piece of the photo, these pixels, if you will, and stick them on top of these pixels. I want to get rid of this thing, so I'm going to cover it with that thing. And so it, the point is, you're in charge of choosing what goes on top of what you're getting rid of. And so let's dive into that. Okay, so this is an old photo, like literally 10 years old. Um, and no editing done to it. It's just a straight JPEG from a really old photo. And I'm gonna go straight into the eraser tool. And if you saw what I did, I went to tools and then I chose erase, all right? So I'm in the eraser tool. You have basically two things you can do, three sort of, um, add or subtract. Now add means I wanna put a line on my photo, right? Whenever you paste over it like that, you can, um, it'll do the math, if you will, and figure it out and erase what's underneath it. If you don't like what you selected, so if you accidentally went, oh crap, I went all over my photo, just hit clear selection and it'll get rid of those for you. Um, subtract is different. Subtract is, oh, I did that and I didn't mean to go that far. So you hit subtract and you can just erase the thing that you're trying to erase, if that makes sense. No, that's not exactly true. You can erase the mark that you made over the thing that you're trying to tell it to erase. You get the point. Um, so subtract is basically just erasing the marks before you erase the object. They call it subtract because if they call it erase, you start really getting all these, it's like the Inception movie. You're like, God, what layer are we on in terms of talking about the word erase? It gets a little crazy because there's also the erase button here. And I'll show you that in a second. So to erase, um, by the way, you can change the size of your um, uh, mouse here like that. I prefer to use the bracket key. Right bracket key will increase, left bracket key will decrease. By the way, I'm still on subtract, so you'll see a minus in there. You can also hit the X key, and that'll change it to add. I wanna add a mark that will start erasing stuff. So I just come and I paint over it, and I say, oh, that looks pretty good, and then I hit erase. And Luminar will say, all right, let me figure that out. I wanna replace it with other pixels, and boom, it just erased that fence. Now, I don't know why the fence would stop right here. I'm doing this just for fun, but it actually, it's pretty clean. It looks good and I could be happy with it. And if I was happy with it, I would just say done and I'd go back into the regular editing um, window of Luminar. And if you'll notice, I have my erased, immer, uh, <laughs> immer, erased image layer. So you can turn it off to see what it looked like before and you can turn it back on. Now, if you decide you don't like that, you just hit delete and your layer's gone, but all, any edits you may have done in this base layer are still there, so you don't lose anything. So that's a quickie on the erase tool. Now let me show you the clone and stamp tool. Um, actually, you know what, hang on, I'm not done. Let me get out of this, let me get out of there. I, I forgot to show you the lasso. So let me go back into tools, erase, and there's lasso. So you have add, you have subtract, right? That's to add the marks to the photo or subtract the marks prior to doing the actual calculation and erasing the object. And then you have the lasso. Now the lasso allows you, if you have large objects, it comes in pretty handy. And also if you have like um, really um, straight lines around objects, and I'll show you what I mean. So the lasso, you start by making a mouse point and then you drag your, um, your mouse cursor, right? My hands are free. 
um, and you make another mouse point, right? And then you come over here, and I'm not gonna do this. This is not really a good photo example for that, so I'm just making the marks. Uh, and then you just keep moving, and you keep putting these marks down, and it basically makes whatever shape with straight lines, right? So that's sort of a pentagon-ish. Um, but let's say that's what you wanted to erase, and then you just hit the erase button, and of course, it will erase that object, right? So did a pretty good job. It's a little messy on the side there, so you could come over here and say, well, let me add a little bit of that. In fact, I'm just gonna take all that out. I don't really like it. And then you can hit erase, so you can stack um, both kinds of erases, eraser erases, whatever. You can erase stuff multiple ways on the same uh, sort of trip to the eraser tool. So there, I use both the lasso and the brush eraser, and then I'm done, and now I say I'm done. And again, I didn't do a clean job where the fence ended. This isn't about that. I do recommend you take your time. And in fact, I also recommend that you do things like that where you zoom in and say, okay, well maybe I need to clean it up a little bit more there, blah, blah, blah. So um, that's what I recommend. Um, there's my erased image layer. And again, I'm gonna delete that because I wanna go back and show you clone and stamp. So clone and stamp is there. And if you notice, uh, maybe you didn't, and I didn't talk about it, on a Mac, it's Command. I don't know what it is on a PC, but you can hit whatever the thing is on a PC, but on a Mac, it's Command E for Erase and Command J for Clone and Stamp. Just in case you like those things, I don't really ever do that, but. Um, okay, Clone and Stamp confuses people, I think. Uh, first thing to know is, again, brush size settings, right? You can change softness and opacity, and if you have a, uh, a pen, you can do that as well. Um, I'm just gonna leave it like this. So clone and stamp, you're saying, I'm gonna take the pixels that I choose and I'm gonna paint them over the pixels that I wanna get rid of. So same example, I'm gonna get rid of some of this fence. So you can see my little mouse, right? All you do is you, it says click to set the source. You click the option key. That's on a Mac. I'm sorry, I don't know if it's different on Windows, but whatever the option key equivalent is is what you do, I'm sure. But option on a Mac, and then I go like that. I just click. Um, after I hit the option key, I click once with my mouse cursor. I'm gonna shrink my brush. And what it's gonna do is you can see where this, this gray mark is in the snow. It's gonna take whatever's around there and it's gonna allow me to start painting that over the pixels that I wanna cover, which in this case is the fence. Now here's the interesting thing is, as I move my mouse cursor around the photo, you'll see that my gray mark moves as well. So you have to be careful because eventually you're gonna get like, if you're down here, you're gonna, uh, let me try this. I can hardly not erase that and you know why? Because my gray mark, you see that at the bottom of the screen? It's off the screen. So I can do this, but when I get down here, I'm, I'm, my selection is off the screen. So what do you do? You hit the option key again. You say option and I'll just come over here and grab some more white snow and then I'll just go paint that. And that's how you do it. Very simple, very straightforward. And you know, same thing, you can just keep going. So option, I'm gonna go right there, I'm gonna shrink my mouse, and I'm just gonna paint some more white snow on top of that fence, and you know, blah, blah, blah. Again, I recommend zooming in and taking your time, but that's how it works. You just option, and then you click, and you, and you paint, it's simple. And just like the eraser, you get a clone and stamp layer, so you can turn it on, uh, or off in this case, and back on. And that's it, I'm gonna delete it because I don't really care, and I'm actually gonna show you one more example Completely different photo, much more complicated. But I wanna show you a couple of examples of how you use the tool. This is just a shot from downtown Austin. I edited this like a year or two ago in Luminar, just kind of, I just like bricks and old signs and whatever. So uh, anyway, so I'm gonna to go to erase. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna erase this FDs, FDC sign, like a fire department sign or whatever it is. And so I'm just gonna paint over that little sign. So let's paint over that and I think my selection's fine, so I don't need to clear it. I'm gonna hit erase, and let's see what happens. And that's what happened. The brick looks pretty good. Now, here's something I recommend, zooming in and checking these things, because if, um, if you're not careful, um, excuse me, and if the brick is incredibly uniform, like a white brick or red brick, where they all look pretty much exactly the same, you need to be careful because um, the lines where they intersect are probably gonna show up more. Um, you can't really tell here that I've painted over that, even zooming in. So that worked out really well in this example, but there can be situations 
where because of the pattern is so specific and sort of geometric that you could paint over something and it doesn't paint exactly right and then you're like oh crap so um, let me do a little bit more i'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger and i'm going to paint over this thing and this thing and that thing and then i'm going to do the same thing here and we're just going to wing it and see what happens if i'm taking these little things off the wall so let's say erase and see what happens boom they're gone they look good i think that looks good let me show you the before and the after if you didn't know they were there you would not know that they had been there right now one thing that i would look at is i'd say well look at this i got a stain here on the uh, on the wall so maybe i should get rid of that so okay so let's do that let's get rid of that guy Let's hit erase. And yeah, it didn't really help a whole lot. This is where clone and stamp may come in handy and we'll just save that uh, to go back. Actually, yeah, we'll do that um, in a minute. Um, the other thing I might would do is I would uh, get rid of that thing and I'd get rid of that thing in the window and just hit erase and boom, they're gone. I think they look good. So um, the other thing what people like to do is remove people. So. Um, a couple of tips. Number one, go slow. Uh, number two, zoom in because, you know, I can sit here. I'll just show you. I can sit here and I can say, well, I'm going to get rid of her. Um, I just want to get rid of this lady and I'm going to say erase. And again, with the eraser tool, you're saying, hey, Luminar, take over. Just replace it with whatever you think uh, it needs to replace, you know, whatever should replace it, right? Um, so, it, it, you know, from a distance, it did an okay job, probably not a great job. In fact, that section looks a little messy, so I'm gonna hit erase again, and you can just keep stacking it. From a distance, that might be like, you might just say, oh, it looks like a bush is there, but let's zoom in, and uh, let's see what we got. And actually, you know what? It doesn't really look that bad. It picked up, let me show you the before. You can see the girl is there, right? You're, you're looking at the same spot I am. Um, now you can see it basically, let me go back to the girl. If you look, there's a, um, well, I can't, you can't really tell, but I think there's a little bit of a bush behind her, and now there's a whole bunch of bush behind her. So, again, that's Luminar just saying, oh, crap, I don't know. I, I think it's, uh, let's make it a bush, because that seems kind of reasonable. That seems like the stuff behind it. So, um, I, I think it did a pretty good job. It's not amazing. Um, from a distance, I think it looks fine. If you were blowing this up, I would say slow down, take your time, and maybe use clone and stamp. So, I'm going to hit done. I'm gonna just keep that erase layer, and let's go try now a clone and stamp layer. So let's go into clone and stamp, and we'll do some more messing around here. Now, I'm gonna start with this drain um, thing here in the brick. I don't really want that there, so I'm gonna just say right bracket key, make my mouse a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna say source pixels are right there, and I'm just gonna kinda paint over this thing um, and this is what I'm talking about. Now look in the right side of my, um, my mouse. You can see all it's doing because I, my source scooted over enough to where the drain used to be. It's grabbing those pixels and it's putting them somewhere else. So I got to change. So I got to come down here. Actually, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say option. And I think right about there looks good. And I'm going to say paint. And that looks better. So now you look at it and you can't tell, but that was a good example of how you gotta be careful about how far you're uh, drawing or painting away from your source because you might start bumping into stuff that you erased, but Luminar is gonna pick it up because those are the source pixels, the original ones that are there, and it'll paint them. But if you look at it now, you have no idea that there was a drain there, and yet there was, right? You can see. So I think that looks good. Um, for this girl, I would zoom in and I would, uh, shrink my mouse and this is where uh, you got to take your time so i'm not going to do a great job here because this video is probably going too long um make your source so i'm going to st start with my source about right there and i'm just going to paint over her leg right that leg and you just you know i recommend going kind of slow all right so i think that looks pretty good now i'm going to come over here and say option again and i'm going to put it about right there and i'm going to paint over this leg and it does a pretty good job, you know? I think I think that looks pretty good. Here's the thing, you gotta take your time because the next part of it gets a little interesting. I'm gonna do option, and I don't know how this is gonna turn out, so uh, you know, we're gonna find out together. Um, I'm gonna just try to paint over her leg here with those pixels, and it's doing okay, except you can see at the top, 
it's a little messy, so I need to grab these pixels. And, and this is what I'm talking about. Take your time. There's no hurry. There's no worry. Um, there we go. That's not bad. So we're kind of getting there. Let me go back to fit to screen. It looks like the handrail is fine. Um, obviously, there's a part of a female there, so um, you got to finish the job. But that's how it works. I'm not going to bore you to death with watching me walk through all the details. That's how the tools work, and I wanted to walk you through that. So I'll say done. Again, I would come back, uh, fix that. You might want to try clone and stamp instead of erase on this person. And I think I, I use them differently depending on the photo. On the first one, the erase tool worked great. Let me show you that photo. And that's because it, everything's just white. I mean, it, it was snowing, right? So it's just a big blown out scene. So that's easy. I got literally like millions of white pixels. I can easily paint everywhere. Clone and stamp doesn't really necessarily come into play in this photo even though I used it to, to show you how it works. But um, in a photo like this, I think clone and stamp could work really well. You could also take the dark pixels here and just clone out all the stuff here uh, and clone out that and just make the window totally dark. You can do all kinds of interesting things. You could also clone out this little wire that connects uh, that overhanging uh, roof thing you know, to the building uh, and just make it sky. You can do all kinds of things, but that's how the tools work. Very similar. And you can use them, uh, you know, sort of in, um, you can stack them, for lack of a better word, like we used erase, uh, the eraser first on this photo, and then we use clone and stamp. And again, experiment, go slow, zoom in, and uh, just be, a, especially with clone and stamp, be careful of your surroundings because um, it's going to start, you know, maybe adding pixels that you don't want in places, as you saw with that drain. So that's how it works, my friends. I hope this helps. Sorry, it took me so long to get this video done. I don't even know why I never did one, but I'm glad that I did. Thanks for suggesting it. If you guys have suggestions for future videos, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this one and other thoughts about things I might want to do in the future. And hit subscribe if you haven't. Share with your friends, like, all that good stuff. You know how it works. And I appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks for coming by. See you real soon. And adios.